आई वी एम हाई आई एम जरीना पूनावाला अ लाइफ कोच अ बिजनेस मेंटोर एंड अ मोटिवेशनल स्पीकर I tackle the challenges that come with varied work cultures and I try to give out some cheat codes for loving your job in the second season of the empowering series with me Zarina. This show will feature live sessions with me and a participant, most likely to be an entrepreneur, a startup founder, an employee, a recruiter, or just about anyone who strives to love their job and looks forward to bringing in a positive shift at their workplace. On today's episode we have a very special guest. I have Parzan Patel with me. Hello Parzan. Hi. <laughs> so Parzan is a fabulous chef. She has uh, her blog called The Bavi Bride. She's also a host of Not Just Dhan Sak where they're talking about a lot of Parsi food I believe. Most of all she's a mother of two. Yes. And that's what we're going to talk about today, right Parzan? Yes. <laughs> all right Parzan so first let's begin with just finding out why are you called the bavi bride so uh, funny story around okay. that um basically i got married and unlike most indians who move away from india go somewhere mm-hmm. abroad i did the reverse so i used to live in new zealand and i got married and i came to india oh wow but because i'd stayed there for about 10 10 years i didn't actually know how to cook any parsi food and it was just my luck that i married a typical Baba, Baba who loves his dhan sak and loves right. everything. So you know, I started making all these like secret phone calls to my mom, like how do I make this? How do I make that? Oh my god, uh-huh. I don't know. And I live with my in-laws, so you know, there's added pressure of like making, you know, like doing things, making right. a impression and Correct. things like that. So. I started cooking these things and then I'd lose these pieces of paper on which I'd written these recipes. Mm-hmm. So I was like why not just start a blog and the original idea was that the blog would just be for me okay. so that I would like have a place where these recipes were there so I could like you know get back get to back it and to refer it. to it. Right. And then I was looking for a name and the Bavi Bride name just kind of came up in a dream actually like i dreamt it and i no was way. like oh actually that's like a really nice name so just quickly like made a logo and uh, started it and so that was uh, like an enlightening dream for you <laughs> yeah but well, most of my good ideas come to me in your dreams, dreams or like inside the shower so okay yeah. <laughs> fine fair the shower i understand but yes. nowadays as a mom i don't even get like a full Two minutes ka shower, so there's no point. Like there's no space for the ideas to come. And you have <laughs> two, right? So yeah. being uh, so these days, I've heard of this uh, lingo recently. It's called mompreneur. Yeah. And I like the word very much because it's giving you an idea of how entrepreneurs can actually be uh, diverse and could be defined yeah. simply as a mom. Yeah. Right. So you have. two little kids one is an infant and one is a toddler i believe correct yes um what are the ages so one is almost 3 and mm-hmm. the other is almost 1 wow yeah and you've been running your um, business for a long time so my business has been around for about um four years mm-hmm. five four five years um i used to do it from home okay. and then i moved into a central kitchen uh once i had my first kid okay. because there was just uh, too many people in the house like wow. you know with chef i mean with my other cooks helping me out and things like that so yeah i moved into a central kitchen when my first son was 9 months old really and um then i found out i was pregnant again okay. so i was more scared of telling my co-founder Oh, then I was of telling my husband. <laughs> so I was just like, "Oh my God, she's going to kill me." <laughs> But uh, that went off well as well, and uh, yeah, so the business is going on, blog mm-hmm. is going on. And where do you find uh, the challenges? You know, I mean, there's so many women out there who have become mompreneurs, yeah. and they choose that path. They don't. They don't want to take a maternity break right after delivery. Probably a couple of months or yeah. so. And sometimes ideas just come to us, right? Yeah. So when you've got that idea, you want to optimize. and maximize that opportunity so how are you milking that opportunity while being able to look at after the kids so i mean one couple of things around the word mompreneur right so i actually um i mean i like it because the thing is that you know everyone talks about like oh your baby will be born and you'll just immediately fall in love and then you know like you'll just be happily ever after right. and i mean in reality maybe that does happen mm. but that doesn't happen as immediately and for everyone so right. i've always been someone who is very passionate about my work and um you know life outside of home so when um like mother had happened to me the first time like i mean while i was in love with my son and mm-hmm. i was happy 
it was just i mean to be honest it's incredibly boring to look <laughs> look at a child <laughs> for like 12 hours a day continuously <laughs> right like i mean yeah. it's a lot of work but um you really feel the need to like do something else as well like i i mean for me it was very important that mm. i didn't always just want to be defined as a mom as a mom right um and the second thing is i mean i always already obviously had a business so mm. for me it was a little different but even though i had a business i went through this whole kind of journey maybe it was postpartum depression to a little bit or whatever but this whole like doubt this anxiety like will i be able yes. to do these things how will it work will i get the support will i ever be able to leave this house like there's just so many existential questions that go about true That's you know true. in those first few weeks, few weeks. Um, so i think having a project having something else to do aside from your child really sort of helps you create that identity get your confidence back that no i can I can, I can go do out this. And I can, I can do, do this. You know? I can do because with a mom, so much, especially when you become a mom the first time, mm-hmm. you don't know anything. Right. Like uh, I remember, they told me on the third day, like, okay, now you can go home, and I was like, you're sending me home with this person. <laughs> like, I don't know how to look after him. Like, <laughs> you know, that I is mean, cute. I, yeah, and I was just like, okay, like, are you sure you want to send me? Yeah, home it's your then? person. It's your offspring. <laughs> Why do you expect them to leave, leave your baby at the hospital? No, no, like. <laughs> take it the baby of course but yeah. i was just like you know there's no like manual or whatever so there's a right. huge learning curve that happens around you know you becoming a mom True. and there's a lot of doubt in terms of are you doing this right are you doing that right everyone has an opinion on what you're doing oh yes so um having that something extra which you are good at where you know like no this is the way to do it really helps you um you know gain your confidence back right but at the same time as much as i like the term mompreneur mm-hmm. i feel that it's a disservice to entrepreneurs because we don't have any term called dadpreneur right. um nor do we have a term called uh, manpreneur right so um ultimately i would like to be defined more as an entrepreneur that because is exactly it doesn't be. uh you know so whatever just, little thing i'm doing whether it's blogging mm-hmm. um for some moms you know they're doing like affiliate marketing for other brands whether they're working from home whatever it is like it's still a business Correct. and it's still legitimate work yes and businesses run on profits not yeah. on being a mama dad yeah. in short yes but you know i uh, came across this word and i was talking to a friend of mine who had her first baby and mm. she's probably having she's on her way with a second one and she told me about this term and i had the same question in mind you know the one mm. you're asking that why is there no dad preneur and no papa preneur and why is this just a mom preneur thing yep and her response was that maybe we need people to just know that mums can work yep and they can run businesses successfully correct so you do a 9 to 5 job you put your child in a crash probably or a daycare and you want to go back to your child but being a full time business woman is extremely hard so giving that word mum uh, for her was like you know give me the leverage here yeah you know? <laughs> no. just let me be yeah that, in that that's sense. true yes when you see it from that angle that, yeah, that so is I true yeah so i guess different perceptions different people yeah. uh how do you deal with going back to work after what your infant is just 9 yeah nine so months? he's 9 months well right. with uh so with my first one i um my kitchen used to be from home so mm-hmm. i essentially went back to work when i returned back from my mom's house around 7 8 weeks but okay. that was like i was still at home right uh, um with my second i actually um already had a kitchen and i had been away for almost 2 months so uh, i mean giving birth just lead up to birth etc right. and uh, unfortunately having your own business means especially in the early days that you may not get like a proper maternity leave so yes, for yes. me i got back to work uh when my son was 8 weeks and wow. um it was incredibly difficult mm-hmm. because i was um very adamant on the whole breastfeeding thing so i was pumping milk for like 2 hours a day then running going to work and even though i was only working for like five hours mm-hmm. like going to work for five hours so most people would be like oh that's like a dream thing like even being able to leave the house and go for 5 hours it seemed like a big a big deal basically. a big deal it was like a big challenge because uh, you know i was doing i had to pump twice mm-hmm. just to be able to go out for those 5 hours so it was right. like i was actually working for 8 hours mm-hmm. doing the other bits and pieces and yeah you had a routine yeah. which uh, comprised of you actually working 8 hours yeah. you doing different jobs <laughs> yeah right yeah wow but it must have made you anxious or angry or you know um, did it ever give you any kind of a panic attack made you feel so there is uh 
a lot of guilt involved with moms around like practically each and everything okay and um so when i had my first i mean i've always not been like a very kind of hyper perfectionist person okay. i mean i am that in my uh, work like ocd level but uh, <laughs> when it comes to like my personal life i'm not so much okay um but i made when i had my first i realized that if i wanted other people to help me with my kid i mm. needed to lower my standards mm. i mean i needed to accept that they will not do things my the way the way you want them and to for do most it. moms that is the hardest bit like for some yes. reason even though we claim we don't know what we're doing if someone else tells you <laughs> ki like you know or if your dad is trying to get involved right maybe they will not do things the way you will do it right and coming to terms with that fact that you know maybe their way also works or so, even if it doesn't work as well as yours um the job still being done the job is being done right so you have to decide like do you want that job being done by someone else or do you want it to be done like at x level right if y level is still satisfactory you correct, know correct so letting go was a huge part in my first part like in my first sort of phase as motherhood and like mm. learning that when i had my second one it was like the standards lowered even for the <laughs> <laughs> so now it wasn't like is my child like changed like 5 minutes after he's pooped now it's like ha huh, like he's he's getting changed like <laughs> doesn't yeah, matter it's happening but learning you know just like letting go um i mean i have great support from like having a family having a full time nanny i'm like very privileged in that sense to mm-hmm. be able to afford that and right. have that support but um it's on you to lean on that support and on yes. you to accept that uh you know things may not get done your way but your way is not the only best way. way yeah yeah probably might even be the best way but not the only way correct you know yeah. uh, i do have clients who've gone through the phase of motherhood and uh we've talked a lot you know mm. and there's a lot of coaching and therapy involved because yeah. i think moms just need someone to vent out to at times that's so true <laughs> <laughs> and i'm happy to be that punching bag wherever they need i've realized that this, this particular point that you've made you know about letting go and letting other people kind of take charge of a situation that can be taken care of if yep. not in the best manner but in some manner yeah so if your child is basically um like you said your child is uh, pooping hmm. at the most what's going to happen somebody's got to change a nappy yeah somebody's going to change a diaper now how different and how how much more variation can there be compared to what the mom's going to do yeah they can't be much right yeah that is something i've realized that um, the new age parents are having a very tough time dealing with letting go yeah so how did you actually just was it like one day you finally decided hey you know what just let it be or did it it's take you daily, time it's a daily struggle it is <laughs> because um so for moms i feel like so for anything to do with a kid right i would do like the complete thing so if i tell you mm-hmm. or uh, maybe it's a woman thing so if i tell you go change my child right it comes naturally to a woman that that means i have to remove the dirty clothes mm. um select new clothes mm. change the diaper throw the diaper in the bin mm. do all of that and then they are changed right when i tell my husband uh, <laughs> change the child hmm. that means i have to remove his clothes i have to choose what he's wearing next um, so most process. days i have to pick up the dirty diaper okay. so he is just like making the child wear the clothes and right. so it's a continuous thing with him i'm just like that's not you changing the child like you have to do the <laughs> whole thing yeah, or there, like don't do like process. little bits right Correct. it's like when men come into the kitchen and cook like mm. the whole kitchen's a mess so you're just mm. like was it even worth it like <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 we can do it <laughs> so um the letting go part is just it, it's a continuous struggle mm. um but i think you have to allow that you know i mean so i've had calls from my husband being like oh like your son's crying or like our son's crying and i'm just like I've decided that I'm going to do the same thing that he does to me. So if he call he in the early days he would call me when he, uh-huh. it was his off day and I was working and he'd be like you need to come home he's crying. And I'm right. just like uh no like I don't call you when he's crying and you're at work. So I'm just like okay figure it out. Okay bye and then I just like put my phone on silent. Wow. And that's, that's a good in, tip. That's, that's a good incredibly tip. hard because mm. my heart's going like oh my god my son's going to cry for like the next 3 hours whatever. but it's helped my husband figure it out yeah. you know and 
so if i want to hold on to all the responsibility then i can't blame the dad that okay he's not taking anything on like absolutely. you have to sort of throw them in the deep end the same way that we were thrown in the to deep end absolutely yeah. You, yeah it's not like you're well equipped to be a mom or a dad at least the first time yeah so you know the second time around that's why i've always seen the second sibling in a very very comfortable uh, setup you know yeah, my mom is like she, every every alternate week she complains and she's like you're so chill like the, you know you're like just uh, like my your son has mm-hmm. like a like right now he has a cold and he was like coughing when we were uh, skyping and she was like do something and i'm like yeah like i've given him homeopathic meal this pills, chala yeah. jayega it takes like a week like right. you know like the first time i was just like oh my god should we go to the doctor should we go to the doctor this cough is sounding like this blah blah, yeah, blah. So, so casual and yeah. so <laughs> but i think the second time around the challenges are different so for mm-hmm. me the biggest challenge has been the guilt i face around like am i giving enough time to each child you oh, know yes yes because my first child now knows how to communicate with me so he can tell me mummy hug this mm-hmm. that my mm-hmm. second is not able to say that but that doesn't mean he doesn't need my time of but course. just pushing away the first and being with the second it's incredibly hard and so there's a huge struggle now for me like the new struggle is like you know i try to keep like half an hour half an hour for each kid hmm. whether it's like okay eldest ko only i give him hmm. breakfast that's like our thing together okay. and youngest i always take him for a walk in the evening that's our thing together so even if it's small things like now the struggle is like am i giving enough attention to both of them right so the guilt has changed the guilt is now around like so there's always some amount of guilt yeah. it's only <laughs> changing in terms of the question that you're asking yourself yeah right <laughs> so first you're asking yourself are you giving them enough time then you're asking yourself um is it balanced enough for you you yeah. know am i doing the right thing with them yeah what kind of uh, tips or uh, coping mechanisms do you actually use if you have to uh, you know rid yourself of these guilts do you d- does a mother ever get rid of her guilts <laughs> that's the question i think to an extent the guilt is like self made mm-hmm. like i mean oh, absolutely. so i'm i'm becoming the coach here <laughs> <laughs> go ahead no but i mean that's the realize i you know come up to like mm-hmm. my husband doesn't seem to face the same guilt like you know i might go into like oh my child has been in a dirty diaper for half an hour why did i forget to not bring his clean mm. diaper blah 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 my husband faces no such thought process it does not even cross his mind so right. but the thing is i'm not saying that now you should purposely make your child sit in a dirty diaper but the point is that all these thoughts are of your own making yes. like yes the child might be slightly uncomfortable mm-hmm. and it's not recommended but you don't need to like break yourself over the fact that you forgot to bring a diaper you're human yeah like they or say maybe you your child pooped out of schedule and you didn't know that they didn't would know about need it. it correct right so the guilt is to a degree self made mm-hmm. so for me i just try to just be like is this going to change the matlab you know like me thinking that is this going to change anything if it's not going to change anything what is the point of me like i mean you know feeling like in this way what is the point of me feeling this way it's not going to change the situation right now so let me just kind of stop feeling that way yes um and it's a conscious effort that you need to kind of tell yourself like it's okay a, it's a daily dose you have to give yourself yeah. i mean if you're talking about guilt you can be guilty for plenty of things yeah. you know even if you are a stay at home mom you can be guilty yeah, or you I mean, can be made right to now, feel guilty let me tell you exactly so <laughs> right now the thing is so um i'm actually moving back to new zealand soon oh, so wow. i've kind of transitioning out of my business like out of my catering business um and so this past month i've not been going to work but okay. i'm the kind of person who likes to stay occupied so i'm like going to a cooking class and i'm like doing this podcast and you know doing different things and i've been made to feel guilty like oh now to you don't have work exactly so how is this work like you know and it's like yeah but like this is my hobby and this makes me happy right and it's not like um no one's looking after my child so you're not allowed to put that guilt on me like i mean so long as my child is taken care of mm-hmm. if i want to go go out for 3 hours or 4 hours to do my own thing um i'm not going to feel guilty about it of course and but that's a choice that you need to make because it's very hard like especially now like i feel like oh i don't have like a legitimate excuse to like right. you know just be hanging around the house but it's uh, in consequential what others think when you're raising your child i think because yeah. most important part is you're a mother for the first time or the second time or the third time but the children are yours yeah <laughs> those are your <laughs> offsprings you yeah. procreate them yeah. you may not know the best way to deal with them but you do know how to get through that phase yeah. and every day is changing for you because your kid is actually growing by 
the minute correct you know yeah. and no no two days are going to be alike going to be alike and no two kids are going to be alike so yeah. the whole process for you is just learning unlearning relearning yeah. you know and then repeating yeah so um does that kind of make you angry or frustrated um, at times the learning curve is very very steep mm-hmm. um but i mean i think i I enjoy it. Okay. Um I like I mean I've always been a person who likes to sort of learn new things, research new things and so on and so forth. I think where the frustration happens for me is like if I learn a new way of doing something maybe um my support system mm-hmm. who supports me with my kids do, does not support me in doing that, right? So right. like now there's this new talk about attachment parenting like you wearing your baby you hugging them yes, a lot yes so i will never refuse my sons if they come and like want to hug me mm-hmm. my um eldest is around 3 so this is the famous terrible twos threes yes, yes, phase sir. that goes on where two they, under they two. just yeah you and they, and they always like crying i mean he just erupts into tears for no reason whatsoever okay so I'm of a belief where you know like okay if he's crying I want him to not grow up feeling like it's bad to cry you know oh, yes, so I will so, so I hug him and I'll try to understand why why are you crying what hmm. is it you need use your words like you know is always what I'm trying to like hmm. get him to tell me why exactly he's upset or whatever but now that's like a new thing so if if you have elders in the house they'll just be like are don't cry like a boy you know so hmm. or like boys don't cry hmm. or any kind of those don't kind of things don't cry like a girl or don't or cry like a girl or don't dress up like a girl why do you want to play with a doll mm-hmm. um you know so it's actually communicating those mm-hmm. things or dealing with that frustration ki like i want to parent my child a certain way absolutely my support system doesn't entirely believe in it they are not interested in learning why right i want to do it that way mm-hmm. but i still need them if i want to go to work so it's a very fine balance right like yes. so if so i can't just be like nay you will only do these things my way because right. the reality is they will not or they will say yes they're doing it and then they will still and they're not still not do it it's yeah. they have the their human touch and, and they have their way so i'm so but that finding that balance where you are like you're okay with with that kind of like okay okay they will always say it maybe i can tell them or maybe mm-hmm. i can so what i do is i talk to my son afterwards that okay maybe grandpa told you that don't cry like a boy but mm-hmm. i want you to know that it's okay mm-hmm. like you can come to me and you can always cry and i'll always hold you. like i mean this is all high level talk for a 3 year old but i don't know how much he's <laughs> oh, grasping yes, but, but they, at they least do like, grasp a um, lot you know at least he knows that like you know mom's there so he can talk to mm-hmm. me that mm-hmm. way because i had a really close relationship with my mom and i want that with my kids that is important but uh, this uh, was something that you mentioned whether they grasp or not they actually start grasping enough from 3 months yeah and your child is in its developing stages from 3 months of age so whatever you do however you're dealing with them hmm. and uh, the visuals that they see the actions that they are picking up from you they imbibe everything so when people tell me that you know my child is a spoiled brat hmm. I want to ask them what did you do to bring that little child who doesn't even know the meaning of being a spoiled brat yeah. to that level. Yeah. And kids can I mean unfortunately I just feel like this is a, again like one of those old things like I don't feel kids can be spoiled like you exactly. have Exactly. either done something or you are pushing that kind of thought onto them that they're spoiled while mm-hmm. maybe the child is just trying to communicate with you. Absolutely. Um, so there's it's always about you know the do's and don'ts and no this is wrong. No. Yeah. You can't do that. No. You can how are they supposed to know what's right when you're only telling them what's wrong? wrong because i do believe i've seen parents do that and my first uh, impression hmm. and my first reaction to that is you need to change your parenting style your child doesn't even know yeah. how he or she is growing they don't even know what style you're adapting with them they know nothing yeah. basically yeah. it's you who will change your parenting style and that is how your child will be raised yeah I think being open like you mentioned being open to learning is so important. So I was reading I was listening to this podcast mm-hmm. very interesting thing where they were saying um they actually said that the early years of being a mom mm-hmm. they actually compared it it's a term called matricence yes. so comparing it to adolescence like right. the teenage years where you're just feeling very awkward you don't know what you're doing mm-hmm. half the time but you want to show off that but not sh- not show off but like portray yourself as being confident this is exactly what a new mom goes through you yeah. know and then i listened about how she said that 
whoever looks so the brain develops the fastest between years 1 to 5 like yes. you mentioned mm-hmm. but what also works is for the parent those 5 years if you are in close contact with your child you experience exponential growth in your brain again correct and that never actually happens unless you um are a caregiver for that child so it will yeah. even happen and that it's not just for the mom it can happen for the dad if he's also involved in, in it yeah, so i think reason. viewing this as an opportunity mm-hmm. that okay this is an opportunity for me to like just like 10x my brain right makes me feel more okay with like oh now i have to change the 15th diaper of the day or whatever like you know like let's view this as a a way of like developing my skills or you know like i know for a fact that like staying at home with my toddler has just mm-hmm. really improved my focus because i'm just like he just goes on and on in the background and i can still focus on work so that's actually improved my right. focus at work because i don't let someone's like you know bar 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 like get to affect, you get get affect me mm. so that's actually helping me in in that way so it's about changing your perspective and thinking oh how can i also learn from my child rather than just being like me continuously teaching them. i think you know that's where i'd like to slip in this um, thought process which indian parents have yeah one indian parents have decided in their heads it's uh, a preempt assumed and done dusted written in stone yeah we are right children are wrong so they true. cannot <laughs> be right they don't they're not supposed to argue with you but sometimes as kids grow and yep. in today's day and age you have every child um very very open to understanding how to use their ipads and their phones or the yeah. the parents uh, you know the mm-hmm. technology around you in such a situation your child is going to ask you more questions than you can ever imagine yeah because they are curious to mm-hmm. begin with and secondly they don't even know why you ask them not to do things yeah there are no reasons yeah so in indian parenting i do find certain uh, things that can change in fact you know there's a study which shows that 63% parents would love to be taught positive parenting yep in order to oh, save okay. themselves that struggle yep. that they have been going through uh, which i think we lack here where i know how to do my job yep. don't teach me how to be a mom don't teach me how to be a dad nobody needs to tell me what i need to do yeah so what's your take on that how do you think about it so i'm very um open to i'm that i've already i'm trying engaged. to not be the indian mom <laughs> <laughs> um i'm very open to kind of learning and aware of that fact that um because even though that struggle didn't happen with my mom we have quite a open relationship but the fact that aware that that struggle can happen absolutely so one of the things that i do um and it's a very conscious thing is trying to be like if my son asks me something mm. immediate impulse like you said is to say no yes right can i have this no can i do this no <laughs> and i'm just like but is it going to like break the world is he going to be in immediate danger if i say yes. no so like yes of course now if you ask me can i run on the road the answer is a no of course but um do i let him just walk on the footpath without holding my hand like yes like does it stress me out yes but he wants to explore he wants to walk on the footpath by himself mm-hmm. so if it's not posing an immediate danger to him i let him do it right if he wants to like my son's a total fashionista he and oh, it's wow. it's very perplexing for me because <laughs> i don't spend more than like 5 seconds thinking about what i'm going to wear right don't really put on makeup so it's very difficult for me but he is someone who wants to change his t-shirt like 10 times a day okay. and I, it's like i'm always like oh my god like how many clothes are you going to make me wash <laughs> but at the end of the day that's not going to impact my life in a really bad way and yeah. it's making him happy so like you know like so i'd really try to restrict myself to say no and yes. really question myself each time like why am i kind of saying it that's i think that uh, moment of reflection and introspection as a mother is so important yeah just being able to say hey you know should i be doing this or not should i have this reaction or not what's yeah. the worst that can happen Correct. maybe asking certain questions and what you said around you know we expect our kids to like obey and it's seen as a sign of this but i was reading an interesting uh, post um, on instagram that day mm-hmm. about how because we have this whole generation of people who have learned to obey mm-hmm. and not ask questions they're facing new trouble now in the workplace because they just don't know how to handle conflict yes so if your boss tells you to do something you'll just say yes like you will not question and maybe right. that's impacting your career later because or you are in a mode where 
you're in a discomfort of his politics, whatever is happening. But you just don't know how to deal with it because you've never been taught it. You've never been uh, learned like you've never learned that it's okay to have a different opinion from yes, you, it's okay from your to parents. Agree you know? to disagree. Yeah, it's okay to uh, negotiate. It's yeah. okay to have conflict. But you need to have those learning experiences. Experiences as and, as a kid, right? Yeah, and that brings me to two things that actually happen in your workplace, even as an entrepreneur. Uh, in a business or even as a parent one just like you rightly pointed out you know you've not learned how to say no yeah <laughs> and saying no is the most important thing it's more important than saying yes because yeah. that's when you will choose your battles wisely you will know i need to work on this i don't need to work on i need to give in to this i don't need to give in to this yeah. so even with kids you know you cave in the minute they start screaming shouting especially in public places yeah. <laughs> in a theater in a mall i yeah. think parents go through this bit of embarrassment hmm. with their child a lot of times uh, has it ever happened to you do you deal with it so i don't know i've uh, i mean i've crossed the two mark we're into mm-hmm. three so <laughs> i don't know it's not happened in public places just yet but again like i say what i try to do is um if he does have a tantrum and if it's not really impacting my life mm-hmm. and he wants something then i'll give it to him but i mean it can't be if it's obviously something negative then it's like i just try to hug him really tight and just be like i know you're upset i know you're angry and frustrated that you can't have this thing mm-hmm. it's okay to feel this way but um you know like i'm sorry but i cannot give it to you and i read somewhere that um i'm just trying this i don't know what works but you're supposed to say this like really softly so okay. they actually stop crying try to listen to what you're saying okay. and that sort of calms them calms them down so i don't know if it works oh, wonderful so, I- <laughs> so person on that note uh, we'll come back and take some more calming tips for the children let's take a short break and we'll catch you guys on the other side of this break Hey everybody, welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you are not following us on social media, please make sure you do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. I know that you guys are making fun of this promo on social media. Please continue to do so. That seems like, uh, you know, as long as you keep listening, I don't care if you make fun of it. I wanted to again just reiterate we're hiring at the best place in the world to work at. That's the IVM Podcast Network. We're looking for producers, content creators, audio engineers, developers, photographers, business people, all kinds of roles. Go check out our careers page, ivmpodcast.com/careers. We're really happy to announce the second season of Marvel's Lost and Found, which premieres on the 23rd of July. This season, Zen and Avanti cover issues like addiction, mental health in kids, grief, eating disorders, and more. There are a number of special guests that will be on the podcast. Catch new episodes every Tuesday. On Tech Careers in the News, Sheila Ditya is joined by Shridhar Rajkopalan. He's the MD of Digital and Interactive Platform at Accenture Technology. Also joining them is Marin Grace, the MD of Accenture Digital Delivery at Accenture Technology. They talk about extended reality, the interesting opportunities in this space, and a whole lot more. On Equity Sahiye, Anupam is joined by a very special guest, the co-founder of Motilal Oswal Group himself, Mr. Ramdev Agarwal. He talks about his fascinating journey from being a farmer's son to becoming an entrepreneur and a lot more. On Mr. and Mrs. Binge Watch, Janice and Anirudh are joined by their very first guest, Purna Jagannathan. They talk about her recent casting in Big Little Lies and her experience working with Meryl Streep and Nicole Kidman. On What a Player, Mikhail is joined by Unni Nambudripad and Joel D'Souza to discuss and close the ICC Cricket World Cup 2019 and Wimbledon. On Not Just Tansak, Parson talks to culture and food writer Meher Mirza about the importance of articulating food stories rather than recipes. On Advertising is Dead, Varun is joined by Gaurav Lalla, co-founder of Loose Cannons Content Studio. They talk about the importance of brand communication and their mutual admiration for the brand Nike. On the Pragati podcast, economist Anupam Manu returns to discuss how dollar bonds would affect the Indian economy. And with that, let's get you on with your show. Welcome back to the empowering series with me Zarina and we are still in conversation with Parzin today. Parzin is talking to us about how to deal with 2 under 2 sort of. Yeah. She's got an infant in hand and a toddler just about walking now. Yeah. So we're discussing how dealing with anger, letting go, being calm, teaching your child how to be calm is so important, right? So Parzin I was thinking about this word balance. Yep. You know everybody is talking about balance there's work life balance there's uh, the mother and child balance there's a balance that you have to figure out with your in-laws sometimes yep uh, with your relationships at home yep. along with your relationships at work how do you understand this word what is what is your perception of this word and so um i recently so i'm a very proud working mom um i mean nothing against stay at home moms part time moms whatever of but course. i find it um like it's a very 
strong part of my identity and mm-hmm. i think i would personally just go crazy if i was like at home all the time with my <laughs> with my two kids yes so um for me it's been very important to find that uh, kind of balance between having my work and um also being a mom okay and i think it's imp- for me the reason i'm so proud of being a working mom is because i want to show my kids that like that's okay like right. i don't want them growing up thinking that a woman's place is only at home or a woman's place is only in the kitchen so for me it's more showing them by doing yeah and it's a show I'm, and tell yeah and it, i may not have it right all the time so of course the most important thing when it comes to motherhood and balance is again letting go and having that support system okay um and like trusting that your support system will do like at least a 75% job and mm. that the 75% is okay like you don't need to be 120 at each and everything yes in parenting so i think one thing that I'm, and also in the parenting the balance comes in for me is like i'll choose maybe two or three things that i want to be at like 120% mm-hmm. and then the rest of the things can be at like 60 70% and then that's so still do you okay have with me. Uh, the 120 in your head so for me the 120 comes in um so for my infant i'm very strict about the no salt no sugar thing okay like wow. um, just because um i grew up struggling with my weight Mm-hmm. still struggle with my weight. I don't think that that has maybe maybe that has nothing to do with the fact that I had chocolates when I was a kid or whatever. But I just But want to it say could I have. I did mention at the beginning of this that you look very fit for uh, Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned it to you. Um <laughs> but you know so so that is something that for my infant is like my 120 like um I will not allow someone else to give him sugar if I find that out. you've got it coming from me that you gave okay. him whatever so for me that was till a point where i realized that i couldn't do it anymore so when he turned like 10 11 months and we decided that like cooking separately wasn't happening i could not do it i let myself be like okay now it's okay right right for me the other 120% is really around uh, with my kids allowing them to just be themselves yes um not like i was saying not saying no allowing them to um be happy and explore their happiness in different ways that is so um, important yeah and it, and that happiness may not be the way that i want to be happy right like so i have recently so my son is a elder son is a big fan of peppa pig okay. and peppa pig is all about the muddy puddles <laughs> so when it rained recently the only thing he wanted to do was go jump in the muddy puddles um So I came home from work and you know it was raining and I was like you know Murad you know what it's raining let's mm-hmm. go out so I was like completely drenched anyway so I was like chalo like and my in-laws were just looking at me like you know who's this like psycho person like why is she taking her son out mm-hmm. and like she was like he already has cold why are you taking him out and I was just like he loves it like you know so we just went out in my gully and like jumped in puddles for like 10 minutes and honestly saying like I have come to view like as ad- as we become adults we view yeah. puddles and floods and like and he like who wants and, to walk in yes. the dirty water but it was so refreshing just jumping with him because he was just like so happy running through the water like jumping in that dirty water and he was mm-hmm. just like mummy jump mummy jump and like honestly i had like the best time of my life i've had in like this past month that maybe that is so sweet you know just like doing something really silly like just jumping and which we don't allow ourselves to do so just like you know just being like so that's very important for me that people don't uh, shout at my kids that they explain to them they try to not say no so i yes. will try to take a stand on on those things as much as i can right. again that balance comes in around not pissing off your support system because if you piss them <laughs> off then they're just going to be like okay fine you do things your way and so, then you um, do it on your own yeah <laughs> right? yeah and then so you know, that, that, that's like a deal breaker for me because yeah. i and cannot then the do it on my own support system just becomes a system and there's no support <laughs> yeah exactly so that's so i think um those are the three parts in having For balance for me right but um it's really i feel important to just you know come to that realization i mean i keep stressing on that but i i'm a part of a lot of mom communities and i always see mm-hmm. new moms struggling with this you know where we just feel like they're not doing a good enough job my husband's not helping no one's helping me i'm feeling all alone i've not had a shower in like 5 months whatever and i just feel all of this would be resolved if we just didn't have such high standards from hmm. ourselves but uh, those standards come from the fact that these days helicopter parenting is a fad yeah i'd say we have helicopter parents undoubtedly but 
it seems like a fashion statement to be a helicopter parent now yeah i you know? i'm like the opposite <laughs> that's so i'm just i'm dreading the time when i have to start sending my kids to like classes and this and all and i'm just like do you really need to go like can i you know the pressure can i just yeah, 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 the moms. Who, yeah the pressure's on the mom right because if you have to send your child to five classes uh, i don't see many husbands leaving work early to like come and take their kids to those classes or to do anything or do the homework like recently i was at uh, doing some xeroxing at a xerox shop okay and all the kids jinka project tha they were all sitting in the car chilling on their ipads and all the moms were there at the xerox shop like doing the photocopying and being like bhaiya ye picture line pe nahi hai and whatever and while we are all going like oh icsc is much better cuz you know kids <laughs> don't have to mug up this projects kaise was doing the pro- projects it's I, the moms yeah, no yeah, kids yeah. are doing any of these projects True. so and i just find that like totally useless like it's you're not teaching your child anything yeah. so um yeah i'm very anti uh, classes and things i just try to do um whatever i can mm-hmm. um I'm not saying that you should not like encourage your child to do like extracurricular stuff but maybe you choose like one or two things that they can do. So in hel- when I'm using the word helicopter hmm. parenting the term comes from a very hovering parent yeah. a, a hovering mom or a hovering dad constantly worried about their child constantly protecting their child behaving like a security guard behaving like you know this guardian angel on their heads like a shadow. Yeah. I think that is very claustrophobic for a child's growth. I get it so I think as a parent it comes very hard especially um I mean I don't want to say this but like in India where like you know so many bad things are happening yeah um I've like literally sto- like I don't read the newspaper because I just it's don't so want like as a parent it's just depressing I don't want to know the 100 ways in my which like my child could be hurt or that's, like that's you know so it's a very fine balance I think in this sense mm-hmm. where um you are acting like a whatever like you said like a security guard or just being like is he okay call me when you reach whatever to be honest my mom sitting in new zealand still calls me have you reached home like if i have told her that i'm going somewhere <laughs> so mm-hmm. so i think that's a little bit ingrained in the um indian parenting thing yes because of the fact that we live in a country where you can't sort of just let them go but at saying in saying that um I think it's very important to just kind of let them go. Mm-hmm. Go do something that they want to um you know even if it's just like going down to below the building and playing, right? Like you don't need to be there to supervise. Yes. Um it's hard like letting yourself do that and trying to sort of stop um stop yourself. But I was reading this really funny meme on Instagram the other day that if my uh, you know if we had like iPhones and like phone tracking mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff when i was a child or when i was in my teenage years like my mom would be like horrified with like <laughs> what all i had done <laughs> right yeah, so true. um i think it's about taking a step back because that's a part of growing up right, right. so um but i think it would be very it would be very hard. i mean I, unfortunately i've not been in a part of that part of motherhood yet so right. i can't really comment on, on what other moms are doing at that point maybe i might turn into one of them but i do try to again so instead of just saying no explain to them why it's a no or try to not say mm-hmm. no um so if it's like so my my youngest son loves um chai ka mugs if okay. he sees anyone with a chai mug he will come like crawling at record speed across the hall to like bang the the chai ka mug and you know recently and obviously we are like no no don't touch it it's hot no no don't touch it it's hot and then you know what last week i did i was like look i'm telling you it's hot here mm. i took his hand and i like placed it on it mm. and immediately like he obviously pushed it hand away and i was like look see we told you it's hot this is this is what hot means right you will hurt your hand right he's not done it this week because he like has figured it out like okay like there is some kind of reasoning yes. and he's only 10 months he's not like being able to communicate he still does it but he doesn't do it as much like the you know the attraction has gone away yes. like if you've kind of explained why someone is telling you no right so i think it's important if we can figure out a way that you can communicate like why is mom telling you to call when you reach that place you know okay maybe these things have happened whatever whatever mm-hmm. maybe that communication will like ease it off um but, but the same logic applies to something else we commonly do wrong as parents I'm not a parent by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying it mm-hmm. in a collective uh, manner. Uh that when you're coming to something like this with your hand, hmm. you know, touching yep. the mug it's hot. There is 
children are very freakish when it comes to haircuts and uh, cutting their nails as well. Oh yeah. And it's because of the equipment, it's the tools. The yeah. tools just look so dangerous. There's a scissor and you know that they look like weapons in front of you just yeah, yeah. out there to throttle you. I think the the place where I go to for my haircut, the uh-huh. guy, that guy is like traumatized by my son, <laughs> by my son. Like every time I go, I'm surprised that he's still like a It's <laughs> he fascinating. Works in, he works there because the way my son shouts when he's getting his haircut for no reason. But that's exactly where uh, like what has worked. Like screamed the entire 25 minutes. Like he, there was no tears in his eye. He's like 3 years old. He was just like screaming and I'm just like why are you screaming what is this so scary because, but, because uh, they just look at these equipments yep. as weapons yep. and uh, they do look dangerous I know. for some something that tiny yep. you know uh, and uh, one of my clients was telling me my son is always crying every mm-hmm. time I'm cutting his nails every t- I said you know what why don't you do it first and then yeah let your child go through the process let your child see the process that hey when i'm cutting my nail i'm not hurting myself i'm removing something that is dead yeah it means nothing it's yeah. just a uh, grooming and i'm getting a haircut it's refreshing it's nice and i'm smiling through it so when your child is looking at you they replicate what you do their observational skills are so high yeah in that age bracket that all they do is observe yeah they don't know how to speak they don't know how to express better than understanding what they're watching and that kind of visual learning is so important so like you gave that visual example i thought this one is important as well um from there i'd like to ask you one very very important question person what is it that you have for your child or children as an ultimate goal when we have offsprings and you know you've gone out and procreated and got something into this world you've decided this is your life's project yep. and you want to have goals for them dreams for them so what are your probable goals for your kids i think my only goal um is for them to like succeed at life so whatever it is like to be happy mm-hmm. um and i know that sounds like a very like big kind of goal but i um was recently binging on gray's anatomy okay and <laughs> which is a very insightful show it is it is um but there you know they were talking something about some parenting issue they were talking about and whatever and uh, this mom said that you know what you're trying to do is you're trying to build a boat mm-hmm. like you want your boat to be strong enough that they can go travel the world go see the world but the boat is strong enough to know that it has to come back to land when you know something's wrong with it or like it needs to come to land it feels safe enough to come to land right. and it's strong enough to go out. out and and just that just so resonated with me because like that is you know as parents we always get very um touchy about like oh my child is leaving me and going away to school or oh, they're leaving me and going to college you know the empty a lot syndrome. of a lot of um, i actually seen a lot of moms cry because their kid goes to play group like the mm-hmm. first week they were like oh how like the mom was crying more i was ekdam much happy like oh my god two hours to myself <laughs> <laughs> but you know the thing is we ref- like you said we're reflecting that emotion back onto them that it's True. not okay to leave it's not okay to um go explore you know like we are pushing those kind of thoughts on to them so for yes. me the biggest goal is to really try to not do that to my child mm-hmm. and just be like you know it's okay like you want to go do this like go do this but that is uh, i'm so refreshed by what you've just said parzim because you know there's uh, this entire survey which tells us that parents in our culture and country are so obsessive about yep. careers yeah so when you're asked what is that goal that you want your child to achieve in life what is it that you want your child to be good at in life the first thing is like a 51% chance that they will tell you it's careers it's that's so sad only 17% hmm. will tell you that i want my child to grow at uh, his or her full potential yeah. i want them to experience different things or understand yeah. uh, comprehend how to be happy yeah. and, and there are hardly any literally like 22% who will choose comfort 33 who will choose happiness 51% choose careers yeah in our system yeah you know currently and it's just um, i mean i think it's it's sad because your career is like it's one part of you but that can't define you and if you don't know how to be happy and how to be at your full potential then you're not going to have a yes successful career that also to comes, an extent right yes. like or like you can't let your career be like the only i mean Goal. as much as i am like saying oh i'm a pro working mom i'm an entrepreneur etc that can't be like the only thing you in do. your life yeah. absolutely so i that's the beauty of work life balance work is a part of life yeah 
the fact that we have to even use this in the same sentence i find very derogatory to yeah. be honest because work is not to be balanced with life yeah. it's you, you're telling me it is equal to life that's when you need the balance right actually yeah <laughs> yeah and i read this interesting um i can't remember which kind of community or culture does this but they were saying how it's so important that every 5 years mm-hmm. you kind of just um quit what you're doing like quit your job life or i mean whatever quit your job and just go do something else for like 3 months or 4 months mm-hmm. and um, you know so a lot of people uh tell me oh i don't know how you do so much as a mom like you know you are doing a podcast also you're doing a blog also you're doing hmm. a business like, how are you doing so much but the thing that i want to say is that that is what's keeping me alive like if i was not doing all these different things like i like my creativity would die like yes, so you need your creative like, juices running i need to running. be learning something i need to do something which is very hard so for me doing this podcast like not just dhansak when i imagined it mm. i sort of thought about it last year around this time it took me 7 months to like approach ivm because i was just like i don't know how to host a show whatever like blah 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 there was so much like internal talk happening mm. around i don't know how how will this happen will they even do this blah 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 all it took was me to send an email and like you know something interesting i'd also read was if you ask someone something mm-hmm. even if they say no you are not in a negative place you are just in the same place that you were before you asked yes, them yes so it's about just learn you know doing i think having that mindset that is okay to ask it's okay to learn and explore and like try to do these many things refresh sort of come back and you know try a different thing like we're so set like as parents we always tell our kids no now you have to finish the degree you've already spent like 4 years on it like so yeah. what if you're not enjoying it like now you finish it right right but i mean i'm not saying that now you should not like motivate your child like of course you should motivate them and push them but if your child is visibly like unhappy doing that then you need to question why they're why? unhappy and like a degree at the end of the day is a piece of paper you mm-hmm. know i mean now that i'm 10 years into my career i don't even get asked at interviews what degree i did right right so like at that time it felt like it was such a big thing mm-hmm. but it's as you move through life it's not really a big thing so like now that you have that realization we should pass it on to our kids i feel right True. yeah uh, so on that note i'd like to actually make a mention that uh, i'm extremely happy as a coach <clears throat> to know your views because you really seem like you want to raise your children to be happy to be uh, good people good humans maybe just understand their surroundings and accustom themselves yep you know ask questions yep. very importantly yep. uh one very important aspect that i think uh, i don't want to miss out on our show is moms in their early maternity hmm. uh, months yep. they lose their self confidence a lot yeah over uh the children the questions that they are usually asked also if they're not really working or they don't have something to look forward to moms just feel very less validated unappreciated yep. you know but you've got to understand that it is something that you have to pursue unapologetically yep you're still a mom you still have to do what you want to do yep. deal with your child the way you want to <laughs> and you'll figure it out on the way correct right? and i think and like you said it's a lifetime project right so i think you need to just relax and be mm-hmm. like okay this bad thing happened today mm-hmm. um so i always joke with my other mom friends that uh, you know frankly speaking i don't remember anything that happened in my life before like i was 6 Right. But maybe like very you have very select happy memories right you don't remember each day to day so mm. i just always joke with my them like like you know mostly to they will not even remember that like i did this thing so i need to just yeah, like that you're let saying it that go. person but today's kids they're on yep. their phones and uh, you know parents want to get rid of the responsibility sometimes or just take that little yeah. break by handing over the ipad i'm or... guilty of doing that too so <laughs> <laughs> sorry and to take that break so it's yeah. fine but Uh, how how much do you let your child use technology at this age? So th- see again, there's a very this no like there's some parents who will just like completely remove technology. They'll just be like there is no TV in the house, there's no iPad in the house, so you can't work like that. You, they don't watch only. Right. So I'm in awe of those parents. Really. You are <laughs> like I'm just like wow. मतलब the fact that they can do that, especially right. uh, stay at home moms who do that. मतलब so not only are you at home the whole day with your mm, kids, with your kids, you have also managed to like uh, not <laughs> like right. distract them. with something so i don't know what you're doing because i can't survive more than like six five six hours with my kids alone <laughs> okay. but um you know so i'm in awe with, of them but actually i also have a differing view because mm-hmm. i feel like you know we are growing up in an age where 
like technology is so much a part of us right. you know kids like kids 6 7 are going to coding classes yes. like they're learning how to code like i don't even i still don't know exactly matlab i know like that's like php java something yes, something yes. but beyond that i don't know what code is right um so it's really they're growing up in this phase where technology is like just so much a part of it and it's going to change really rapidly like i remember when snapchat came about i had just about learned instagram and even though i'm only 30 i was just like i can't do snapchat like i just can't understand it like you know like um and that's already happening matlab so yeah, i mean i would not say very... I, th- i would not say at 30 <laughs> that like i'm old yeah. right but it's already like happening because technology is so changing so we just have to allow them to be with that technology like just saying that okay you are not going to watch anything mm-hmm. is is not the answer to me mm. so to me the answer is like how can you use technology in like a more productive way pro- you know so way. if your child is watching so what i try to do is um I do give my child the iPad but we listen to the song together and sometimes we also dance to the song together. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not like he's like I'm totally against your child being like zombie like 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 kind of you know, not listening to anything or doing anything because right. they're so focused on that. But if you can teach them like okay, like oh this is how mom interacts with me if you can interact with them then that's teaching them how to use technology in a way that's productive right and you know they are going to like now schools have ipads you can't so actually, get rid of technology if you teach a child not to use the ipad yeah you're actually like harming them from performing yeah, at school right yeah but you can't right? uh, not use technology anymore but there's one fact that i'd like to present at this yeah. point uh children under the age group of 3 when yeah. they're using too much technology too much of course, yeah, extensive yeah. Hmm. they have a delay in their speech in their cognitive skills and their motor skills i'm sure It's of it like I i'm think not saying radiations for anybody even adults and radiations and like i said again like i would not want them to be like zombie like like just watching that and right. like not be aware of what is happening and things like that so yes it has to be monitored it has to you have to set a limit that it's maybe like whatever like one hour a day whatever mm-hmm. but at the same time you the onus can't be on the mom like i'm just yeah. saying that you can't just blame the mom mom for that that like you know i recently went to a restaurant and there was a kid there like watching the watching the phone and a friend of mine very innocently like, i mean she's not a mom and she was like oh that you know like that kid is watching ipad like since uh, like a <laughs> hour and a half and i was like you know what don't don't judge her <laughs> um she brought her kid along with what is essentially a girl's lunch okay so like let's talk about the fact that she brought her kid along with girls lunch maybe she doesn't have the support system at home to leave her kid behind right so we also need to talk about those things that okay if we're not giving the ipad what else is the solution is dad going to take the kid out to the playground so mom can get some time mm-hmm. like you know what are the other solutions like i don't i mean i just see a lot of articles talking about the problem like the And kids are the addicted blah 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 yeah. but where is the solution true you know so i mean so, aside from it just being like you just eradicate all technology from the house which is not possible even in which case like now the thing is your kids actually help you form better habits because my son now comes to me and he's like mummy phone off he's like a little mm-hmm. terrorist so like <laughs> i can't even like do any social media or like faff around on my phone because he's the one who's coming and telling me like oh mom stop the phone that is and i've started brushing my teeth at night because i want him to him brush his teeth at night and he'll only do it if i do it so actually just you know changing that perspective and being like okay um my kids helping me form better, better habits. habits yeah <laughs> so so i guess um, all in all as much as your child is learning from you i yep. think uh, as a parent you're learning so much more from your child totally and like you mentioned the habits so you're yep. getting into the right habits you're getting into uh, a routine you're also yep. on your way learning how to unlearn like yep. i mentioned and then relearn and something i'm sorry to interrupt but like you said like you know that moms face this whole like doubt and they face yes. this um, lack of confidence lack of i confidence. don't i mean to address that i just say one is your support system your community yes but the other thing is just learning to be unapologetic right you know and it comes very hard to women mm-hmm. like it's it's something that you need to uh train yourself in doing but you know being like i gave that example before where my um husband called me and said like oh son is crying mm-hmm. so you have to be unapologetic enough to be like okay so what what can i do i am like 10 kilometers away i can't do anything figure it out and then put the phone away yeah right so you need to sort of get that confidence that um Your child is not going to blame you mm-hmm. if you didn't like perform to hundred and fifty percent today. Yeah, um, the child doesn't even know. Child doesn't even know. <laughs> so frankly, you know, and it's also like being unapologetic that uh, 
for your choices like if you want to go tra- travel you want to today give the ipad like Decide you know, what you like want. Decide what you want. Yeah, yeah like, like a lifetime project. Na? Like yeah. It's, one day is not going to matter. <laughs> no, one day is not going to matter. At the end of the day, I think uh, what one needs to remember as a mom, an entrepreneur, businesswoman, stay at home, whatever kind of mom you are. You are a mom, you know how to deal with your child. Yep. And it doesn't matter how you do it, you be unapologetic. You can keep your uh, core system and your ecosystem strong around you. But at the end of the day, just learn that you can be wrong and learn that it's okay. Yep. It's okay. The process will continue. So keep watering that uh, little plant of yours and uh, nourish it. Yeah. And let it grow wild and free and not like a little bonsai, you know. Yeah. So on that note, uh, thank you so much, Parzan, for thank coming you. on to the thank show you. and sharing such valuable thank insights. Thank you for listening to all my, <laughs> <laughs> my gyan. <laughs> yeah, anytime. Even off record, not an issue. <laughs> if you liked this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. Think fast. If I tell you I'm Parsi, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Dhansak, I don't blame you. My name is Parzan Patel. You may know me as the Bavi Bride. Though I run a popular Parsi food blog, the truth is I didn't know anything about Parsi food until I got married. It was just my luck. He turned out to be your typical sadra lega wearing kawab khari eating parsi boy and the only thing i knew was dhansak or rather how to eat it but there's more to parsi food than dhansak and there is more to us than our obsession with eggs and our legendary rani cafes welcome to not just dhansak a fresh new show where i talk to friends fellow bavas and parsi entrepreneurs about all things bonu a little bit of history a dash of bawa madness and a lot of food talk there's more to parsis than meets the eye and there's certainly more to us than dhansak join me every tuesday as i talk to some of my favorite parsis in the food space in india and beyond i am the bavi bride and this is not just dhansak Look, up in the internet. It's a meme. No, it's a cat video. No, it's the Geek Fruit podcast. That's right. We interrupt this riveting broadcast to tell you about our show, The Geek Fruit Podcast, where Tejas Dinkar and I, Jishnu, talk about everything in pop culture including DC, Marvel, Star Wars, Netflix and everything in between. You know how your friends hate it when you ramble about some nerdy crap and you just want somebody to listen to you? Well, sorry, there's nothing we can do about that, but come listen to us ramble and it'll almost be like the real thing. Kind of. Listen to new episodes of the Geek Fruit podcast every Monday and the Geek Fruit Bulletin every Thursday on iTunes, Google Podcasts, the IVM app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy listening, you nerds.